morning and welcome to Sunday worship. Good morning. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, now, I, now I got your attention. Well, uh, it's good to have uh, visitors in our house today. I uh, would like to welcome uh, Lucy's sister, his younger sister, and uh, her daughters. You are welcome. And also welcome today again, uh, you and his wife, she's with us today. Uh, you are at the right place, at the right time. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I'm sure we all had uh, a wonderful week and the temperatures are going up. So we thank God for, uh, for, the, for the sunshine. Because uh, here, here in England, when people see the sun like this, you go, uh, you go like <laughs> crazy. We in Zimbabwe, we have got sun 24 hours. I mean, uh, 365 days a year, we've got sunshine. So, <laughs> so we thank God for, for, for that. Uh, in Matthew, Matthew 5, uh, verse 13, it says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltness, can it be made uh, salty again? So Jesus is, taking, is liking us like uh, the salt of the earth, we all know what uh, we use salt for. Uh, we use salt for seasoning our food. We also use salt as a preservative. Uh, so as, uh, as believers, remember that you are not called to be a majority, but you are called to fulfill, to, to, to fulfill your functions just like what the salt does. Amen. Uh, immediately after the after the service, we have the community choir uh, practice, uh, followed by fellowship soup and rolls. I uh, would like to thank Gwen and Trevor for organizing that. And tomorrow, the cameo is led by Major Dennis. And Wednesday, 24th, uh, Bible study at Freshford at 8 o'clock in the evening. Uh, Thursday, uh, 25, uh, meeting at St. John's at uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And our next Sunday meeting will be led by Major David. Uh, the officers will be away from Monday to Wednesday, April 29th till 1st. They will be at the divisional councils in Panstable. Uh, and on Sunday, May 12th, that's the candidate Sunday, so we're going to have a retiring collection after the meeting. And Monday 13th, May, uh, the core council members will meet at half past seven in the evening. Saturday 1st June, uh, that's the spring cell at, from 11 to 2 p.m. Uh, we remember in our thoughts and prayers, Major Olive Stevens and Lily Johnson, in the RIUH, we also think of Major L.C. Pyman, who, has had, who is having an operation at the RIUH next Tuesday, and also let's think of Connie Lambert. And uh, next week, next Sunday after the meeting, there will be a timbrel practice. So all the ladies, may you bring your timbrels for next Sunday after the meeting. And these temples are no, not only played by, by ladies, even men. Men, you can also come in and join the temples. Uh, you, you must have seen uh, this, uh, fl this flyer as anyway, somewhere in the foyer or in the cafe. It's about the spring concert, which is in aid of uh, the Cancer Trust. And it features the Wells City Band. And in that world, City Band, we got uh, Bryony, Bryony and uh, Rachel, they are members of that band. So please, can we support, if we can, it will be held in Wales, and the tickets are 12 pounds, only 12 pounds. Uh, so if you are interested, you can see either Bryony or Rachel for the tickets. And also, the men, the men also, we're planning to have a, a men's breakfast 
I mean, we, I mean, we haven't had breakfast for quite a long time, so just to watch the space. And this time it's going to be an, uh, an Indian breakfast. Uh, and all the proceeds will be going to the windows. Thank you very much. I hope we have a blessed meeting. Uh, I'll invite Donna to come and share with us a few things. So it's only six weeks until our next fundraising event, which will obviously be the spring fair. If all of you, all the section leaders could let me know what stall they're doing, that would be great. And if anybody wants a separate table, there'll be a charge of £10. At the same time, we're having a 24-hour bike-a-thon from 2 o'clock on Friday, the 31st of May, <coughs> until 2 o'clock on the 1st of June. We need to cover all the 24 hours on the bike. There's a form here that you can all sign up to if you want to. But obviously, I do understand that some of you will not be able to do it. Um, the Just Giving page is still live, so if you want to donate um, on that, that would be fantastic. And sponsor money will be gratefully appreciated. Thank you. Good morning. If you'd like to stand, we're going to start our worship off this morning with some praise and worship. the power of, of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and, and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings, who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. you've done for me who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a, a son and daughter the king of glory the king above all kings who rules the nations with who thou justice shines like the sun in all of his brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing Worthy 
is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. you've done for me. Father, we want to see you. Our eyes are shut. The world around us is closed off. And Father, we focus on you. You are holy. 
You deserve our attention. You deserve our open hearts. to break into the atmosphere that has arrived which is just amazing Gertrude asked me could look after the focus on prayer so I've asked Theodora Rachel and Brian to come and share prayer just to explain how I feel prayer is a communion directly to the throne room heart to heart. It's a two-way thing. It's a two-way conversation. Speaking and listening. We believe all prayer is answered according to his will and purpose. Scriptures tells us when we don't know what to pray the spirit will intercede for us. I just want to encourage you. Elijah was a man just like us, a nature just like us. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. Perhaps we need to get him here. And it didn't rain. And he prayed again when it was time. And the heavens gave rain. And the earth produced its fruit. Rachel, come and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessings of the Celebrate Recovery work here in Bath and across the world, and for all of those led to be a part of this group. I particularly lift Sean and the team leading this ministry to you, and I pray for, their stre for your strength and protection for them. I pray for those who are acting as sponsors for the individuals on their journeys. Lord God, I just lift these sponsors up to you. May they have discernment and know what is needed to be shared with the individuals on their journey. I thank you for the gift of space and time that you provided for the beautiful place that's safe where so many of us struggling on a daily basis can be honest about our pain and the negative ways we may see ourselves, you, and the others in our lives. Lord God, I pray that you will bless and protect the positive relationships that are developing in this group. As individuals learn to share openly and lay their hearts and their hurts out in the open, many for the first time. Lord God, I pray that you will protect those relationships as they build and as they grow and help each other support each other on their own individual journeys. Heavenly Father, as we work together and learn to accept that some of the habits we've developed to escape our pain may have caused destruction in our lives and those close to us. Lord, I pray for everyone on their journey here in Bath and across the country that they will come to know you along the way and in so doing so, receive true healing. Thank you, Lord. Good morning. So in today's prayer focus, we'll, we will be praying for the youth, but before I start, I would like to read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. 
He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You, you prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God, I thank you for this day. I pray committing the youth into your hands. Bless them with your guiding grace as they face the challenges in their life and touch their hearts with the gentleness of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence with thankfulness in our heart that we know that you love us and you care for us individually. We thank you for your love and for your guidance and your strength throughout our lives. We thank you that just when we need you most, you're always there. And we praise you as we meet in this way. And we pray now for our church family here, everyone, young and old, wherever they are, that your hand of love and blessing will be upon each and every one, those that are sick, sad, or lonely, or having problems, that you'll come to them and bless them. And we bring all these people to your name right now, Heavenly Father. Amen. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for a beautiful time of worship, a beautiful time of prayer. Every Sunday now we meet at nine o'clock in our prayer room. If we get to a big group, we'll pray in here. But there was three of us this morning, it would be nice to see more. If you can come at nine o'clock, come because we want, don't we want the Salvation Army to be a powerhouse of God's presence flowing out into our community? Because that's what we're about, isn't it? That other people may know Jesus. And you know, it's not gonna happen without prayer. And us as a body of people praying, We've set up the prayer room there so you can use it in the week. Come and use it. Please come and use it. That's what David has named it, the boiler room. If you want to know what the boiler room means, it's the thing that says what the boiler room means. But don't we want to boil with prayer? Boil with the enthusiasm of knowing Jesus. That's what we want. Is it what you want? If it is, come and join us in prayer. We're going to listen now to the ministry of the band, thank you. Um, I really appreciate music, um, modern and older, and this one comes under the older section. And, uh, but it's interesting that one of the verses um, talks about prayer. The second verse says, though this whole world is full of problems, God is still there. For his help and guidance, we reach him in prayer. So um, the Seeing Company is the name of, a traditional name for children's choirs in the Salvation Army. Hands up if you were ever in a Seeing Company. There you go. Well, this piece came out for Seeing Companies so long ago that most of the, no, not most, a proportion of the band were not alive and um and we were um horrified to hear that not only joel was not alive neither was his mother so um so that's how old it is so you can come and tell me later what year you think it came out for um for seeing companies i was alive and um, but you can always speak to denise who had and we have yet to see the photo because apparently she was in the seeing company this year and her friend had permed her hair so we're waiting to see the photo. Apparently it looked a bit like this. So uh, we're waiting to see that photo. But um, you can tell me afterwards, you can see if you can remember what year it came out. We're singing it and we're gonna play um, a song arrangement of Light Up the Sunshine.
Well, good morning. It's a very short story or illustration this morning, so you have to listen carefully. Okay? I've just got to do something. One moment. I just have to fill my jug with water. Okay. Jesus said, But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. Think about that. That's a difficult thing. Now, I've got a paper serviette here. Do you think if I soak it in this water, do you think it will burn? Do you think it will burn children soaked in water? Probably not. We'll see. It's like watching Tommy Cooper, isn't it? There we are. Right, there's the thing. I'm just going to set... Hold that a second. Here we go. Yeah. I'm just going to set fire to it. And we'll see, after I've soaked it in water, if it will burn or not. Oh, yes, it does. There we are. Uh, right, but it's not burning. Can you see that? My hand is, but it's not burning. <laughs> My hand is burning, but the serviette was not burning. There we are. See? Wasn't burnt. Thank you. It was not damaged. I was, but the serviette was not. There is something else that seems impossible to love our enemies. An enemy is somebody who tries to hurt us with words or actions. Jesus even told us to pray for those who are mean to us. I wonder, children, at school, is there somebody you don't like? <laughs> or perhaps somebody who doesn't like you? And you might be upset about that. You think, why does that boy or that girl not like me? And sometimes when somebody hits us or pushes us or says nasty things to us, we, we want to do the same, don't we? We react. We react. Rachel was talking about this in our recruits class, and she said it much better than I... How did you put it, Rachel? In a loud voice. <laughs> she can't remember. <laughs> but you know, Jesus says you can love somebody who is nasty to you, but there's a trick. Our own love is not strong enough. When I burnt this... It's slightly burnt, only slightly. When I burnt this serviette... It wasn't just water. Do you know what was in it? Not apparently, it was this. It was isopropanol rubbing alcohol. It's very expensive, £9.99. <laughs> but <laughs> that was what was really burning. And because alcohol burns at a lower temperature than the napkin, so it was able to burn without setting the napkin on a fire. In a way, Jesus has a lower loving temperature than we do. He can love, Jesus can love where we cannot. He even loved on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. As he was dying, he loved them. And if we ask Jesus for our love, he will give us enough love to love those who hate us. Even though the alcohol will eventually burn out, the love of Jesus never runs out. There's enough love for everybody and more. And the question is for each one of us, do you have the courage to use that powerful kind of love? So remember, the next time somebody is nasty to you, remember Jesus, remember the burning serviette, and ask Jesus for his love to forgive the person who is being mean to you. And God willing, hopefully, eventually, that person will come to know Jesus himself. Thank you. And please do not try that at home. <laughs> God, a minute. Okay, we're going to sing together 243 in our songbook. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name 
Isn't this a wonderful thought? My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. Let's stand as we sing this beautiful song of worship to God. Thank you for your giving. I'm just pleased that we've just finally com completed the core inventory. So everything is now insured, <laughs> which is a good job, David. <laughs> anyway, thank you for your giving. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we are able to come into your presence this morning. We thank you for that freedom we have to worship, to give our thanks to you to present these gifts to you. Heavenly Father, our hearts are lifted towards you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit this morning. Your presence is here. We have felt it. And for that, we praise you. Amen. Um, just to know, every Thursday at 7 o'clock for the next few weeks, we will be doing recruits class. If you want to come along and join us, um, and learn more about the Salvation Army, what we believe, if you don't already know. Maybe you want a refresher course. Maybe you haven't done it since before you became a senior soldier. And for some of us, that's a very long time ago. Um, but if you want to come along, 7 o'clock in the cafe, um, we will be having recruits class. We're going to sing us again, song 602. 602 in our songbook. Lord, I make a full surrender. All I have I yield to thee, for thy love so great and tender asks a gift of me. Lord, I bring my whole affection. It's not always easy to do, is it? But we're singing, Lord, I bring my whole affection. Claim it, take it for thine own. Safely kept by thy protection, fixed on thee alone. We're going to sing the first verse and chorus and if there's anybody who would like to give a word of testimony this morning testimony is so encouraging 
It's encouraging to hear what the Lord is doing in other people's lives, and it encourages us in our own. So don't be shy. Um, stand as we, um, after we've sung the first verse and chorus. Thank you. give his testimony then. <laughs> Anybody like to share? And thank you for that testimony of your healing and your grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sheriff. Great. You see, take your eyes off Paul. <laughs> 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 and take your eyes off Jesus and you're lost. Yes. Hallelujah. Did you want to hear that? Yes. Yeah. Did you all hear that? Take your eyes off the ball and you're lost. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He'll keep you straight. Anybody else? We'll sing another verse, and then if you want to stand and give a word of testimony, do so. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else want to give a word of testimony? I'm sure the Lord's been at work this week.
for his presence day by day. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And the final verse. Let's sing this final verse, and then I don't want anybody to be disappointed. If you want to give a word, please do after this last verse. Thank you. just now um else is going in for a major operation this week and uh let's turn to water place your hands out and we want to pray over her just now dear lord jesus we just thank you for elsie we thank you for her wonderful testimony for her beautiful faith in you and we pray lord that all will go well in this operation that your hand will guide the surgeons and that, Lord, your healing hand will be there through her recovery. Father, we place her in your hands. In Jesus' name we make our prayer. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And Gilbert, you want to come here, then they can hear you. And then, Sean, if you can come up, then. Please speak to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God is good. Oh, if I say my God is good, you say all the time. All the time. God is good. Yeah, uh, I want to thank uh, my Lord for, for whom I am because it's only by his grace that I am here. I think uh, I've now been living in the UK close to, close to 19, 20 years now. And uh, I thank God for that. When, when I came into the UK, I, I came with my daughter, youngest daughter, Nyasha. I think she was about 10, 11 at that time. And now, and now she's a house, housewife. She like, shall I say housewife? Now she's, now she's married. And, <laughs> and, the other, and, and the other son and daughter, we couldn't come with them because uh, they were above the immigration laws that they couldn't come with us as dependents. But our prayer was that, Lord, may you join us with our children. And God does answer his pray answer prayers when his time comes. Now, my son, my son is now in, uh, in Ireland, and my other daughter is in London and Croydon, and we thank God for that. I thank God that all, all my children, they are in, in Christ. Yeah, they, they all need, no, no, no child ever got lost. And these children, they, they brought us uh, two sons-in-law. One actually got him here, 
and the other son-in-law is Osborne. Osborne also is a, is a, a son of officers. His, uh, his parents were retired, uh, retired colonels, and we thank God for that. That uh, each time this family meets, we got no, we got no time for, for arguments, for discussing any other things other than just rejoicing and sharing and sharing uh, Christ, Christ's weight. I, I also thank God uh, for, for the wife, for the wife that he, he gave us, uh, the mother of my children. She's such a, a, prayer, a prayerful woman, and I thank God for her. We are, as a family, <coughs> what we are is, is through her. My wife prays, my wife encourages us even to read the Bible. You know, there are times that you, times you can go to bed and you forget to pray. But my wife will remind you that even when she goes to, to she goes to bed first, when I come to bed, she says, uh, "Let's pray or oh, let's let's read a verse." That's how she is. That's how she grow. And we all we thank God for that. And the cool thing also is that uh, I thank God also for Ashley. Ashley is now is quite involved in this uh, in this in this fellowship, and now is also a. Uh, and Elena Benzman wants to join the wife, and thus we thank God for that. And we continue praying that may God continue to lead us and guide us and protect us. There's nowhere else where we can go to ask for help but other than to look forward to Jesus. I thank you. Amen. Morning. Um, I'm reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting at the beginning and going on to verse 12. Finally, brothers, we instructed you how to live in order to please God, as in fact you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For we, sorry, for you know that instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honourable, not in passionate lust like the heaven, who you, sorry, who do not know God, and that in this matter no one should wrong his brother or take advantage of him. The Lord will punish men for all such sins, as we have already told you and warned you. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, he who rejects this instruction does not reject man, but God, who gives you his Holy Spirit. Now about brotherly love. We do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all the brothers throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers, to do so more and more. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. That is the word of the Lord. stuff David used really smells. <laughs> he just moved it for us. You know, I really like living in Bath. I think it's a really beautiful and elegant city. But just lately, it started to look more like a construction site, don't you think? There's flats going up everywhere. There's roadworks going up everywhere. Cranes everywhere. Um, and it can be irritating to see. It can be irritating to drive through because... It, it just causes um, traffic jams. But you know, the result of it, the final result, can be so worth it. Beautiful buildings, good roads. 
the imitation of ugliness we see is worth it because we will see a beautiful city growing. And it made me think of our lives. And I think that each of our lives is under construction because it's made up of mistakes that we learn from. It, um, it's made up of ugly things that happen to us that we learn from, that we grow through. We learn to wait. We practice patience and being persistent. We work our way through grief and pain, enjoying also joy and laughter. Everything we go through helps us grow and develop as a person. It's not until death, really, that that building process, the construction of our lives is complete and we leave the legacy of ourselves behind for others to remember. I'm sure you remember some of the saints of this, our church. People that have impacted your life for the better because of the, the way they lived and expressed their faith in Jesus Christ. Last week, David spoke about justification, being justified by the grace of God. But once we're justified, how do our lives change? And that's where sanctification comes in. Our tenth doctrine says, we believe that it is a, the privilege of all believers to be wholly sanctified and that their whole spirit, soul and body may be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word sanctify, saint or hallow and holy all come from the same Greek root hagizo or hagizo something like that anyway um, I was reading it in a book in the New Testament sense the word means to place in relation to God answering to his holiness in the Old Testament the root word is kadash which means to cut or to separate in either case sanctification has to do with separation we can read that many um, things in the Old Testament were consecrated and sanctified, set apart for specific use by God. Actually, even in our own church, our mercy seat, our holiness table, our flags were set apart for the use in God's service. Priests were also consecrated and sanctified the person being chosen first and then separated for God's service. When people come to faith in Christ, they are sanctified. They are formally set apart as belonging to God. Did you know you're set apart? That you belong to God the moment you gave your life to Jesus? You are set apart for his glory for his service. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, um, he, Peter wrote this, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you, you may declare the praises of God who called you out of darkness into his glorious light. In our reading from Thessalonians, it is clear that to be sanctified means to be separated from all that can defile us and separate us for, from God's holy presence. The Apostle Paul writes, it is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honourable not in passion and lust like pagans who do not know God, and that in this matter no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish that such sins. As we told you and warned you before, for God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. If justification is what God does for us, 
then sanctification is what God does in us. How he changes us through the work of the Holy Spirit at work within us at the point of salvation. You see, when we initially come to faith, we are set apart from God, as I've said. Our actions may not be much different. We have to learn, don't we? There's people that come to Jesus and they keep making the same mistake as they did before they came to Jesus. But through the power and sanctifying love of Jesus Christ, God will change them within. And gradually their lives change. Somebody once said to me, I can't believe you stayed the, the course as a Salvation Army officer. I can't believe you did. And I says, well, I believe in a God who changes people. I believe in a God who works within people. And I'm a very different person to what I was. But I've grown through all them experiences. The moment I really gave my heart to Jesus, he began to work his sanctifying love within me. We are a holiness movement, a holiness church. I think perhaps we might have forgotten that along the line. But we preach holiness to live a holy life. We have to put holiness into practice in our everyday living. Then as we grow in our relationship with the Lord, our behavior should change. There's a problem if it doesn't. I'd be asking, is your experience of the Lord real? If you're not changing after you've met Jesus, some call this, you know, as we, we grow and we become more and more, you know, we pray to be like Jesus, this hope possesses me. We call this progressive sanctification. And the, the Apostle Peter emphasizes this call to be holy when he wrote, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Because it is written, be holy because I am holy, says the Lord. There are many in this world who would say that they live a Christian life. They do good. They help people, do others no harm, and respect other people. They say they believe in God, even in Jesus. And there are many people like that. But if you haven't got Jesus in your heart, that doesn't make you a Christian if you haven't got Jesus in your heart. If he's not a real and living presence in you, working in you to sanctify you through and through. There are a lot of good people in this world. But when Jesus comes into our heart, he can do immeasurably more in us than we can ever think or imagine. You know, Jesus' greatest critics were the Jewish priests, the Pharisees and Sadducees, two groups of religious people who, yes, kept themselves apart from all that was outwardly unclean and unholy. They followed hundreds of strict rules. They also believed in God. But did that sanctify them before God? Listen to what Jesus says. If you've got your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 11. Verses 37 to 53. When Jesus had finished speaking, a Pharisee invited him to eat with him. And so he went in and reclined at the table. But the Pharisee, noticing that Jesus did not first wash before the meal, was surprised. Then the Lord said to him, Now then, you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and dish but inside you're full of greed and wickedness. You foolish people, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? But give what is inside the dish to the poor, and everything will be clean for you. Woe to you Pharisees, because you give God a tenth of your mint. 
rue and all other kinds of garden herbs, but you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, <clears throat> because you love the most important seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, because you're like unmarked graves, which men walk over without knowing it. One of the experts in the law answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us also. And Jesus replied, And you experts in the law, woe to you, because you load people down with burdens they can hardly carry, and you yourselves will not lift one finger to help them. Woe to you, because you build tombs for the prophets, and it was your forefathers who killed them. So you testify that you approve of what your forefathers did. They killed the prophets, and you build their tombs. Because of this, God in his wisdom said, <coughs> I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill, and others they will persecute. Therefore, this generation will be held responsible for the blood of all the prophets that's been shed since the beginning of the world. From the blood of Abel and the blood of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be held responsible for it all. Woe to you experts in the law, because you've taken away the key to, the key to knowledge. You yourselves have not entered, and you have hindered those who are entering. When Jesus left there, the Pharisees and teachers of the law began to oppose him fiercely and to besiege him with questions, waiting to catch him until something he might say. Sadly, one could say the same of some churches today, don't you think? In today's world, even the Salvation Army in some places. You know, I could wear my uniform anywhere. Does that sanctify me? No. I can tell the world I'm a Salvationist, obey all the rules and regulations of the Salvation Army. Do these things sanctify me? No. I do good things. I try to help people, try to live a life that is pure in God's sight. I believe in Jesus, but does that sanctify me? No. No, no, and no. And do you know why not? Because it's not what we do on the outside that's really important, but who we are in Christ Jesus. That's what matters. We can only live sanctified, holy lives if our hearts are right with God, if Jesus reigns supreme within our hearts. As I've said many, many times before, before belief in Jesus is not enough. You need to receive him into your hearts and life. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. There's a word called practical sanctification, and that's an ongoing pro progress. For example, in our garden, we have a lovely rose bush, and it was given to us on our 25th wedding anniversary. I think it's called something like true love, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. True love, it was a very romantic gift. It was lovely. I've learned that when the flower dies, if I pick off the old flowers, more flowers grow. Now, we've had this bush for about five years, and I only learned that last year. <coughs> but boy, when I started doing that, did we get more and more absolutely stunning roses. They were really beautiful. And I also learned that if you prune it, you know, at the right time, it grows even better. So I'm now looking forward. I can see the rose bushes coming back up, and I'm looking forward to seeing the flowers. The Apostle Peter writes in 2 Peter 3, verse 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
That is practical sanctification. We are to grow. We are to cut out the sin that so easily entangles us and fix our eyes on Jesus. We must, as Christians, study our Bibles. I wonder how many of you really study your Bibles. If we don't study our Bibles, how do we know what to believe? How do we know what Jesus said? How do we know the history of our faith? How do we know how to go forward if we don't study our Bibles? I'm thrilled that in this call we have two Bible study groups, but they could be bigger. We could have another one if you want to start another one. Study your Bibles. Study what the Lord says. Because that that helps with the practical sanctification. We are learning. We are growing. Pray. You know, we've set up the prayer room. I've said it. Come and pray with us. Let's pray together. Let's pray alone. But pray. You know, since we started using the prayer room, we've had quite a lot of requests from people, not even of the Christian faith, to pray for people. So I believe praying together is already making a difference. Having a powerhouse of prayer makes a difference. We're each on a journey, you know. And God has called us to be one of his holy people, part of the chosen nation, to learn to live a holy life set apart from the world's sinful way of living and behaving. That's not easy to do, is it? When we're surrounded by so much and the change of the morals in our world, to stand and say, no, God has called me to be this way. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to enter into that. I'm going to live a life separated from sin. It's not easy to not gossip. You hear things and you pass it on. But, you know, it's sinful because it hurts people. Or the list could go on, and I'm not going to go on. You'll be glad to hear. I'm not going to go on and on. But you get the point, don't you? We are to be set apart from the world's sinful way of living and behaving. Of course, none of us are perfect. Yet when we try, when we do our best to take this journey of sanctification seriously, then Jesus will be at the heart of all that we are and all that we do, think and say. And our life begins to transform. As scripture says, from one degree of glory to another. Actually, that's in 2 Corinthians 3.8. And Paul writes, and we all with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his image with the ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord. Sanctification comes from the work of the Father. The Apostle Paul tells us this in his prayer for the disciples. May God himself, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's also my prayer for each of us, that as we seek to live a holy and sanctified life in this world of turmoil and sin, as we grow, may the light of Christ shine through us, making a difference to the lives of those we meet every day. We're going to sing a beautiful um, chorus And it's called Jesus Be the Center. Be my source. Be my light. Jesus. Jesus be the center. And I would invite you to make that your prayer this morning that Jesus is the center of our lives. We have our um, mercy seats here. It's not a place of disgrace, it's a place of grace. A place place where we can meet and pray together. If you want to come and just re-center yourself on Jesus as we sing this song, come as we sing.
as we pray together. Thank you. <clears throat> that you might be the all in all of our lives father forgive us when we we set out to do right but temptation or wrong friends lead us astray lord we pray for your forgiveness we pray again for your cleansing we thank you because you are an ever forgiving god and yet lord we want to grow in grace we don't want to keep falling every time at the same place we want to advance and to become mature christians so lord we pray that as we as we seek to do your will we will not trust in our own strength but we will trust in your endless boundless grace so that you will go before us and you will watch over us and you will lead us in the right path we pray for everyone here today, Lord. Some will be going through times of real trial and doubt, and we just pray that you will come with your reassurance. We rejoice with those who rejoice, Lord, for those who are advancing, who are becoming more like you and are being used by you. And Lord, we just pray that you will help us to help one another, not to judge one another, but to give out an arm to lean upon and to be strength to one another. So bless us each now, Lord, this day in all that we do because we pray in the wonderful name of Jesus, our forgiving Saviour, our Lord, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. My final song says, I dare to be different. I dare to believe. I dare to live a life of faith, a life of challenge God has planned, of holiness, of victory for truth and righteousness to stand. Let's stand as we sing our final song, a declaration that we dare to be different, to live a sanctified life.
idea. One answer. Do you dare to be different? Hallelujah. Now a final benediction. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. And may your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you.